everyone, Brad here today from the OFH Heritage Center. This month in the Fascinating Facts series, we're going to be looking at some of Ontario's largest residents, big game mammals. So stick around as we look at some fun and fascinating facts all about Ontario's big game mammals. Here in Ontario, we have four big game mammal species that are targeted by hunters. Ontario is home to black bear, moose, white-tailed deer, and elk, which comprise our big game mammal species. Although we do have other large mammals, such as polar bears and caribou, many of them are not considered game species and are not able to be hunted by the public due to their status as endangered, threatened, or with populations whose numbers are in recovery. For today's lesson, we will focus on our four big game species and some interesting facts about them. Black bears are found throughout the province of Ontario, except for in our large urban centers and in the furthest southwest regions of the province below Ontario's continuous forest tree line. These omnivorous fur-bearing inhabitants of our province are extremely common, but can be elusive, meaning they can be hard to catch a glimpse of, especially in certain areas of the province where human populations are higher. The black bear has an acute sense of smell and can detect threats or food sources at great distances. Bears will often smell or hear humans and retreat before being spotted. Encounters can occur, however, when bears are caught off guard by people approaching from downwind or when bears are attracted by human odors such as food or poorly stored garbage. Did you know that despite it being thought that black bears hibernate, they do not truly hibernate? While it is true that black bears enter their dens and rarely emerge during winter, they can become active during their winter's rest. This resting state with periods of activity that bears enter is called torpor, not hibernation. The difference is that there are periods where bears may become active or even emerge from their den before going back into a state of rest. So, the next time someone tells you that black bears hibernate, you'll know better. And speaking of their winter's rest, did you know that this is the time of year where black bears will give birth to their young? Cubs are born in the den, typically in December or January, and will emerge from the den in early spring. These cubs will stay with their mother throughout their entire first year and their second winter. During their second spring, cubs are ready to go out on their own. They'll separate from their mothers in search of mates, food sources, and habitat to call their own. Moose are the next species that we'll look at today. And despite their massive size, people may not know, but moose can be quite fast. By the time calves, which is what we call a young moose, are five days old, they're capable of outrunning a human. Moose are not excellent at keeping up these fast speeds over a long distance, but they can be very swift in short spurts. Another interesting thing about moose calves is that they grow at an extremely fast rate. Beginning almost immediately after being born in spring, calves will grow at a rate of about one kilogram per day. Later, in their first year, that rate of growth is even faster. Later in their first year, calves can put on up to two and a half kilograms a day. Can you imagine gaining that much weight that quickly? Many people know that moose are comfortable in and around water. But did you know that they are fantastic swimmers? It's true. A moose can dive up to 20 feet down underwater and stay there for up to 30 seconds at a time. 
They can also swim quite fast considering their size. They're known to swim up to 10 kilometers per hour. Their hair is hollow, which helps them to stay afloat while swimming or while eating in the water, and it aids them in their capabilities while there. Another of Ontario's big game residents is actually the most popular one targeted by hunters, white-tailed deers. They can be found throughout the province, except in the furthest northern parts of the province towards James Bay and Hudson Bay regions, where the swampy, wet, lowland habitat is more suitable to moose and caribou. Did you know that white-tailed deer are so capable that they could be known as the Olympians of the forest. These impressive mammals are some of the most capable runners and jumpers of all species here in Ontario. They can run up to 50 kilometers per hour, which is an incredible feat. They're also able to jump over barriers, which are two and a half meters high, over half a meter higher than the average person's head. These deer would also be world-class long jumpers with the capability of jumping as far as 9.5 meters in length in a single jump. That is as long as two car lengths. Isn't that incredible? Another interesting thing about white-tailed deers is their antler growth. Only males, known as bucks, typically grow antlers. Each year, their antlers will begin to grow in the spring, at a rate of up to one centimeter per day. Their velvet-covered antlers will continue to grow until early fall, where the velvet will dry up and fall off, and the antlers stop growing. Then, they use these antlers to compete with other males during the fall mating season, known as the rut. Eventually, their antlers will fall off in the winter. Then, the annual cycle begins again, with growth starting up in that spring. The last species we will discuss today is a native resident of Ontario who was extirpated or regionally extinct from our province many, many years ago. This species once existed across the entire province in the thousands before over-harvesting, habitat loss, and other human-related factors wiped out their numbers in Ontario. The species I'm speaking about is elk. Elk have been the subject of many different reintroduction attempts here in Ontario in the hopes of establishing a sustainable breeding population. Beginning in the late 1800s, again in the 1930s, 1950s, 60s, and 70s, elk were brought into Ontario from elsewhere in North America and let go in specific areas of the province. Unfortunately, none of those reintroduction attempts worked. Beginning in the late 1990s, the MNR, OFAH, and other entities began an effort to reintroduce them into a few areas of the province. These efforts luckily were successful, and now we not only have sustainable breeding populations here in Ontario, but populations have grown enough that now this species may be hunted in certain areas of the province. Elk's antlers, much like those of the white-tailed deer, are fascinating and very fast-growing headgear. Their antler cycle is much like the whitetail, falling off in the winter, beginning to grow in the spring, and cycling through this each year. What's interesting with elk is the rate at which their huge, long antlers grow. They grow at more than twice the rate of white-tailed deer with their antlers being capable of growing up to two and a half centimeters per day. This is one of the fastest growing bones known in nature. The size of an elk's antlers depends on the amount of sunlight the elk gets because sunlight causes a boost in testosterone levels, 
causing males' antlers to grow. And upon full growth, elk's antlers are known to weigh as much as 40 pounds. During the rut, which is the time of year where elk mate, you do not want to miss the chance to hear the incredible, otherworldly sound of a bull elk bugling. Listen here. So, just how are they making that noise? Until recently, scientists were stumped. The bugles reach pitches that are far too high to be produced by an elk's voice box. It turns out that there are two forces at work. If you are lucky enough to ever see a bull elk bugling, try to use binoculars to look at the bugling male elk and you'll see that he's moving both his lips and his nostrils. That's right, he's roaring and whistling simultaneously. And voila, with these two factors, you've got the famous elk bugle. Okay, so our last fact today is fascinating and weird and kind of gross. Consider yourself warned. Wallowing is a term given to a particularly strange mating technique that some bull elk use to attract females. Basically, the bull digs a hole in the ground and fills it with his own urine. These dug out areas are known as wallows. Now, here's the gross part. Once the bull elk makes his wallow, he bathes in it, in the hope that this scent will attract a mate. Much like humans use perfume or cologne. How gross and romantic is that? That's it for this month's installment of Fascinating Facts. Thank you for joining us for this virtual lesson. Be sure to like this video and comment below. Don't forget to check out the resources section on our webpage. There, you'll find free printable resource material like mini lessons and activity pages to follow up the virtual lessons. And please subscribe to stay connected as we learn together outside the classroom.